incredible report every year. And the first year after um, COVID in 2021, the two numbers that stuck out to me that really I thought were alarming, 65% of Americans started looking for a new job. And only 20% actually felt purpose in what they do. If those, and they may even be understated, that is its own leadership crisis in itself. Um, so I've spent the last few years really honing in on what is it that creates leadership from the inside out. So today I really want to help you look at that. And we're, we're going to get into an exercise shortly, but I want to talk about a couple things. I want to start with this quote. I know probably everyone has, has seen it, um, but I want to make sure you've actually felt it. Um, and I think this is so true about the things that we do or the things that we say um, are what people remember. But at the end of the day, it is how we make people feel. And I know Octor had said this before about being in service to others. We've talked about authenticity. We've talked about what it means to build relationships. Um, and I just want to set the tone with this quote here. How are you making other people feel? Are you creating a culture that's inclusive? Are you creating a culture that's fun, that's exciting, that's creative? Or are we stuck in this culture of fear? And I want to make sure we think about how we feel about what we do today. So we hear this term a lot, thought leadership. And if you look at the traditional definition of you know, what business analysts and marketers have put out there, it's the expression of ideas that demonstrate you have an expertise in a particular field, area, or topic. Prior than that, there's no sex appeal to that definition. And what I would like to, to propose to all of us today, what thought leadership really is. If you can go to the next slide. I want to put a little twist on it. The expression of ideas that demonstrate you have more passion than anyone else in a field where your ultimate goal is to create the greatest impact possible. That is thought leadership. Impact, impact, impact. And it really is about what you are doing to serve others. And I want to make sure that that, is, that comes across today. Next slide. Here comes that tricky one, the power of voice. Um, I spend a lot of my days focusing on helping individuals a lot within the women in cloud community, finding that element of voice. Um, in a lot of cultures, that's really hard to do. And it really is that imposter that often hides with inside of us. Think about the power of voice. What can it do? It can unite, it can connect, it can influence, it can expire, I'm sorry, inspire, or it can be a very divisive, it can be toxic, it can be negative. So when we think about the power of voice, what connects us to making connections with other individuals? Next slide. This is where the power of story comes into it. Uh, for me, the power of story really is what gives us the voice. And if you recall, um, I spoke, um, gosh, it was probably five years ago when we were still meeting in person at Microsoft. And I stood on that stage and I remember specifically saying the number one, the greatest business tool that I've been able to find that helps grow businesses, that helps network, that helps create greater relationships is the ability to be vulnerable, vulnerable enough to tell stories. That has been the greatest marketing tool, networking tool that I've found to be incredibly um, because stories at the very beginning, which is why I always tell people when you meet with someone, start with a story. They create trust right off the bat. They create connection. They create relatability and they create safety. If humans buy on emotion and justify with logic, how are you showing up as a leader using the power of story and emotion and then justifying with logic later? So let's go to the next slide, Siren. All right. I do believe, and we've talked a little bit about this today, great leaders must answer this question. Why am I here? And I'm not just saying, why am I here in this role? Why am I at this company? Specifically, why are you showing up each and every day? Who are you serving and how are you serving? Next slide. To share with you today, a bit of an exercise. Feel free to take a picture on your phone. Um, I do believe this might be in the in the workbook. I have found these four circles to be incredibly, incredibly helpful when it comes to defining purpose. Um, for a lot of people, this is really, really challenging. Um, as I mentioned before, we're often defined by the role, the company, the team, how others perceive us. But rarely do we actually sit down and think, OK, my purpose is to blank. 
So if you're caught in this kind of um, conundrum of, you know, coming out of COVID and maybe there's some leadership changes happening within the organization, or maybe you burnt out, or maybe you're just looking for something new, start with this model. I call it the four circles of purpose, purpose being in the center, start at the upper right. Oh, sorry. Can you go back, Siren? In the upper right corner, this is where passion begins. What do you love? Identify you what you love the most. Then when you look at it, what is it that your tribe, the individuals that you're serving, what do they need? The junction of those two things become your mission. First and foremost, what is your mission? And if you move over to the bottom left, how do you You take it what your tribe needs, what you love, and you get rewarded for it that ends up becoming your calling. And then when you look at what your calling is and figure out what gifts do you bring to the world and you get rewarded for it, that becomes your career. So if you think about it in this cycle, sometimes you, if you want to start in the upper left, what do you love first, right? So if we go on to the next slide, thank you, Siren. I want you to think about this. This is another thing if you want to take a photo or um, look in the workbook. A simple exercise to get you going. Take some time for yourself. All distractions aside, whether it's in a quiet space, away from kids, family, spouse, whatever it is. Answer these five buckets. First and foremost, what are you passionate about? It does not have to be work related. We've been working with the WIC Lead Accelerator, um, amazing women. And we focused a lot on the moonshot ideas that actually had nothing to do with their role within an organization, but the role that they have in they want to accelerate themselves. Think about what you're passionate about. Start there. The second thing is, who am I serving? Do you clearly understand who your audience is? What are they like? What are they buying? What are they reading? What are their activities? What are their psychographics, their human behaviors? Do you understand their pain points? understand who that audience is and really get to know them. Thank you. What problem am I solving? Every audience has some sort of challenge, a pain point, a gap in some, but what, what is, is it that you're actually trying to solve through serving others that's going to give them the solution? And then third or uh, fourth, what gifts do you bring to the table? those conversations you've had with other people, friends, family, and they say, you're really good at this, or I think you'd be really strong in doing something like this or pursuing this. Oftentimes we ignore them because we're like, oh, I already have a job. I can't think about that. That's too stressful. Start listening to those, those other voices that could be doing something different. What gifts do I bring to the table that I know that are innately me that I can share with the world? And then fifth, finally, the most important part. Legacies are determined by the impact that you create. You give all the philanthropy that goes into it. Yes, that can be a part of it. At the end of the day, how you create impact in this world is a measure of your legacy. It's also a measure of your leadership style, your leadership persona. Your leadership persona is inside out leadership. What is on the inside that's driving you? How are you serving other individuals? The relationship between all of those and those four circles end up becoming your brand persona, your leadership persona, how you show up each and every day. If you're able to answer those questions and feel 100% confident, then you know you've established your purpose. And finally, if you can go to the last slide, Siren, I want you to remember back to your eight-year-old self the same way that I did for me. Think about what lit you up, what made you smile, how you connected with others, how you spent your free time. Because if you think about the things that you did as a child, that youthful kind of spirit can show up again in your later life. I know it because I discovered it. And I wish all of you to be able to do that because I do believe that your leadership persona can feeling that you had when you were eight years old. And one of the things that I truly, truly, truly believe in this quote hits me every single time 
the words we speak become the house we live in. Think about how you're speaking to yourself, how you're speaking to others, how you're speaking to the community at large. That is the kind of persona that becomes your leadership style. And at the end of the day, if that's the house you want to welcome home, if it's not, don't worry, you can sell the other one and go find another one. <laughs> I love it. Great to see you That's all. so great. Oh my gosh, Tucker. Thank you so much for that.